Hong Kong became a British colony after its occupation during the First Opium War of 1841. The territory was ceded to the Crown in 1843 and later expanded to Kowloon with the new territories north of the island coming under British rule in a 99-year lease in 1898. The Second Sino-Japanese War saw the area of Canton fall to the Japanese occupation in 1937, effectively surrounding the British colony. In light of this, it was thought that the defence of the island in the event of a Japanese attack would be difficult. However, a line of defences called the Ginger Inkers Line was constructed during the mid-1930s. Far East Command, led by Air Chief Marshal Brooke Popham, argued that reinforcements in Hong Kong would create a delay in a Japanese attack, helping to buy time elsewhere. Churchill and the General Staff decided otherwise and renamed Hong Kong as an outpost, declining to reinforce the colony. However, in September of 1941, this decision was reversed and it was decided that a stronger British military presence would deter Japanese aggression and also demonstrate to the Chinese leader, Chiang Kai-shek, that Britain was serious about defending the colony. The Jindrinkers Line was garrisoned by the 2nd Battalion of the Royal Scots on the west of the Defence Line, the 2nd 14th Punjab Battalion covering the centre and the 5th 7th Rajput Battalion on the east with a company in the centre. On the island, there was a number of defence units, including Sea Force, made up of Canadian battalions from the Royal Rifles of Canada and the Winnipeg Grenadiers. Other units included about 40 Royal Marines, a Chinese military mission and a section of three French soldiers and the Hong Kong Volunteer Defence Corps. These all came under the command of Major General Christopher Maltby and totaled about 14,000 men. Facing them were approximately 50,000 Japanese soldiers in three divisions under Lieutenant General Takashi Sakai. On the 8th of December 1941, four hours after the attack at Pearl Harbor, Japanese planes bombed Kai Tak Airport, virtually wiping out the RAF aircraft base there, along with other civilian and Hong Kong Volunteer Defence Corps aircraft. Three regiments of the Japanese 38th Division began their attacks against the Jinjirinka Line on the 10th of December after crossing the Sham Chun River further north. The 228th Regiment attacked the Royal Scots in their position on the Shin Mun Redoubt and breached the line after five hours of fighting. Despite a counter-attack by the Royal Scots, the Japanese retook the redoubt and held it. The fall of the redoubt made the defence of the Jindrinkers line untenable, and the order was given for the defenders to begin falling back to Kowloon in order to evacuate to Hong Kong Island itself. The Royal Scots and Punjabs fell back to Kowloon, where the shipyards and ducks were in process of being demolished. By the midnight on the 11th of December, the Royal Scots were safely across the harbour in Victoria, followed by the Canadians, and finally the Punjabis. Meanwhile, the Rajputs were due to new positions at Mao Lao Tong to cover the evacuation and shorten their defence line. They took up their positions early on the morning of 12th of December. At 3pm, the Japanese contacted the Rajputs and attacked in strength. This attack was unsupported by artillery and mortars, relying on surprise in the fading light, and was easily repulsed by the Indian soldiers. Despite this, Maltby decided it would be better to fall back further south to the Hai Wan position at 9pm. This had a shorter line and would be a better defence against seaborne attack. Then the decision was made to evacuate the remaining Rajputs to the island on the 13th. Although Devil's Peak overlooked Hong Kong would be a good observation point for the Japanese artillery, Mulby decided it would be better to have the Rajputs in their defence position on the island. Despite heavy losses in the British shipping, the Japanese didn't attack the evacuation with artillery or aircraft and it was carried out with few casualties. The low tide damaged some of the evacuating ships and 120 mules were left behind along with much ammunition. Overall, the evacuation of the mainland to the island of Hong Kong could be considered a success, carried out in short time under enemy attack and with dwindling resources, the British forces managed to get their artillery across to the island. On the morning of the 13th of December, a launch crossed the harbour of Hong Kong bearing a white flag. It was a Japanese envoy summoning the British governor to surrender. The summons was refused and the Japanese artillery fire against the island increased in volume. There was no air defence on the island, and Maltby decided that a perimeter defence was the best policy to avoid the possibility of a seaward attack. The command was split into two brigades, east and west. The eastern brigade under Brigadier Wallace consisted of the Rajputs on the northern shore, two companies of the 1st Middlesex in pillboxes, and the Royal Rifles of Canada on the south. In reserve were the HKVDC. The western defences were commanded by Brigadier Lawson with the Punjabs on the north, more 1st Middlesex manning pillboxes and the Winnipeg Grenadiers in the southwest. The 2nd Royal Scots and more HKVDC were held in reserve. On the 15th of December, the Japanese increased the artillery fire and artillery bombardments on the island, along with mortar fire for the next four days. This caused huge destruction across the island, including the dockyards and coastal defences. An improvised amphibious assault by the Japanese on rubber rafts on the 15th was easily repulsed. Another request for a surrender on the 17th was rejected. 
but the British defenders saw that the Japanese were gathering barges, ferry boats and other craft in Kowloon Bay. It was clear that the Japanese were planning to attack on the night of the 18th and 19th, under the cover of dark and with the smoke of burning oil tanks and factories hanging over the harbour. The Japanese planned to land on the northwest on the 18th and advance westward through Victoria. The Japanese landings were opposed by the Rajputs, who did great damage to the attackers, but failed to entirely check the assault, and before midnight six battalions were ashore, two from each of the regiments. By dawn of the 19th of December, the Japanese had captured the Limon Gap, Mount Parker, Mount Butler and Jardine's Lookout. However, North Point continued to hold out in a spirited defence. This defence was conducted by men of the HKVDC, mostly businessmen over the age of 55, they were largely veterans in the First World War and also numbered a few free French amongst their number. Trying to fight their way out, they were all killed or captured on the morning of the 19th. Also in the morning of the 19th, the Japanese annihilated the headquarters of the West Brigade, killing Brigadier Lawson in the fighting, and a British counter-attack to open up the Wong Nai Chung Gap failed. On the 20th of December, the British defence was split, with a line holding out on Stanley Peninsula and the west of the island. The Japanese capture of many of the island's reservoirs was a blow to the defence as water supplies began to fall short. On the 25th of December, Japanese soldiers entered the British Field Hospital at St Stephen's College, torturing and killing a large number of British military casualties and hospital staff. This was just one of no less than 12 massacres by Japanese soldiers during the fighting for the island. By the afternoon of the 25th, the situation for the defenders became untenable, and the Governor of Hong Kong, Sir Mark Young, surrendered to the Japanese commander. Hong Kong was the first British Crown colony to surrender to an invading force and the day became known as Black Christmas. The battle for Hong Kong had lasted for 17 days. The Japanese had at least 1,895 men killed of an estimated 6,000 casualties. Allied casualties were 1,111 men killed, 1,167 missing and 1,362 wounded. Many of the Allied POWs would die in captivity and by the end of the three-year Japanese occupation, an estimated 10,000 men, women and children had been killed on the island by the Japanese occupiers.